Okay, so GeekPi and 52Pi have sent me loads of cases. I've done lots of reviews on cases from them uh, and they've all been excellent. This one, uh, this cluster case is still my favorite with the uh, low profile ice tower cooler on it. But if you want something smaller and neater, this aluminum NAS case is, uh, is very small. If we have a look at it next to a Raspberry Pi, you can see that the box isn't really that much bigger. So let's have a look at what's inside. So we've got an aluminum lid or base. Then we've got a Perspex lid or base. A load of screws and standoffs in here with a screwdriver and an Allen key. This is just a USB 3 adapter to be able to attach the drive to the Pi. So you can see there's various different sizes for the different M.2 SATA drives that you can connect to it. We've got a little low profile ice tower cooler, which is great, uh, and a little LED fan. A couple of adapters to attach the heatsink, some instructions, and it looks like some rubber feet or something to go on the bottom of it. And the, the main bit, which is nice solid aluminium with all the cutouts for all the ports and everything. So it goes this way up, so the drive is away from the Pi, and you can see that I've put the USB 3 adapter just to see how it fits together, and these little pins uh, connect to the underside of the GPIO pins on the Pi. I'm going to need a SATA drive, which I've got in this SunFounder case, so I'll just take that out. There we go. So just fit these two brackets on. And we've got two thermal pads. Uh, I'll only use one of those obviously to go on the heatsink. And that attaches this way around. And the little copper standoffs hold it in place. So let's screw those in. And because this is a PWM fan, we have three connectors on the GPIO pins. So the blue one is the one that controls it and uh, PWM fans basically can change their speed depending on the temperature, so you can really customize it exactly how you want. So I can attach my M.2 SATA drive to this and pop that in place. We have two different places as well for different sizes, but mine's a 2280, so that's fine. Is it not a magnetic screw? It's not a magnetic screw, it's annoying, and I've now dropped it. Well, that screw took way too long to find. I don't know why these screws aren't magnetic. It does make it frustrating if you're trying to put it in. There we go. And there's not a bit in the book, but obviously these screw onto the bottom. I'm guessing with standoffs again. Now, it's at this point, it went a bit strange. Uh, you can see, if you look really closely on this standoff, there is actually a little tiny black uh, sunk screw in there, and I didn't notice it and proceeded to put the board on and try and screw into the bottom of that. Obviously, if there's a screw in there that you're not going to get anything else in there. Uh, but I didn't spot it. See, I was trying to screw into this uh, and there was that screw head in there and I didn't see it because it's not that light in here. There we go, all four in place. Now I can drop my Pi into here. Uh, I can work out where all the USBs and everything are. So it must be this way around. Uh, and if I drop it through the top, there's some bits here some, uh, that keep it from going right to the bottom uh, and obviously give the M.2 drive a decent amount of space because these generate a reasonable amount of heat. So I'm going to drop it down, holding on to it with the fan. Yeah, and if I pick that up, you can see there's quite a lot of clearance there uh, between the M.2 drive and the base. And the base is aluminium. So obviously that's good at keeping cool. And these screws are sunk. So I just need to put all that together. Yeah, that's fit together really nicely. Uh, we can see we've still got access to the SD card slot here. And on the other side, the USBs and the USB 3 adapter can fit in like that. Now it looks quite cool open like that, but it does come with this Perspex lid. And uh, a good tip of getting these off is to use a Phillips screwdriver and just pull up the edge with it. There we go, that's quite a cool looking lid. Obviously see through so you can see the LED fans. And this is where we need the Allen key because these bolts are Allen key bolts. There we go, that's all together. And I really like the size of it. It's, uh, it's a really cool case, everything is accessible. We've even got a little cutout for the LED lights here as well. All of this is nice and flush. Now you can see how the rubber feet are meant to go on the base, but if you do it that way, then you have no access to the screws. So I'm just gonna cut it up 
uh, and basically give me uh, an option of being able to take those screws out now and then. I'm not too worried about how it looks on the base. And just another couple, just cut this in half. And I can save this and put it in this box for use with another case in the future. And the last one, there you go. So that's four on and it's nice and solid, not going anywhere. Now my temporary setup does look a bit different at the moment and uh, this is what I'm doing to basically be able to still do videos uh, because I like a standing desk. So I'm going to lower this down. And this is only a temporary thing, but it's a work in progress. I have my LG monitor here, which I can pull up and just plonk on the desk uh, on this arm and I can use it with my Pi. Because the back part of the room, uh, so this will become my kitchen. Uh, basically this wall staying, uh, this wall is going and also this wall is going as well. Uh, so we'll have one very big sort of kitchen diner at the back uh, and that's where I have my desk. But for the moment, this is my temporary setup and it's also our lounge and we will have a fridge in here and a microwave and all sorts. So yeah, bear with me. Okay, so let's pop an SD card in running Raspberry Pi OS to boot from and switch on. And the LEDs slowly change color. The fans come on, but it's very quiet. And we're up and running. So you may be able to hear the fan now in the background if I stay quiet. It has ramped up, so I need to enable that fan control. So control Alt T to open a terminal and let's go to Raspi config and performance and fan. Would you like to enable fan temperature control? Yes. Uh, it is connected to GPIO pin 14 and the temperature I'm gonna say 75. So let's hit okay. And then when I hit finish, we're gonna need, need to reboot to enable that. So let's do that. And now it's all working, but it's lovely and silent. Okay, so I'm going to run Open Media Vault on this uh, to use it as a NAS drive, but I don't want to use an SD card, I just want to use the M.2 drive. So let's install Raspberry Pi OS with Imager. I'm going to use the standard version. So you can see it's picked my Kingston drive, and let's hit right and yes. Okay, so that's all finished. So what I want to do now is shut it down, eject the SD card, and let it run from the SATA drive. Okay, so you just get the standard setup options. Just create your username and password. I'm gonna skip this and plug in an ethernet cable. So I've updated and enabled fan control, but I think I'm gonna use Gparted to partition up the SSD drive. So let's shut this down and then reboot with that SD card I was using just now. Okay, so let's install Gparted. I'm not sure if it's on there already. sudo apt install Gparted. And yes. And let's launch that. And pick the drive that I want to partition. So I can unmount this. And then I can resize. To around 16 gig and tick that and apply. And then I'm gonna create this partition. As an extended partition and add. And let's format that as ext4. And tick to apply all those changes and close that down. So now the operating system will run on 16 gig uh, or just under, and then I've still got nearly 100 gig to use for my NAS. Obviously you can use a much bigger drive for this, I'm just doing it to test it out. So let's close this down and I'm gonna boot again from the SSD drive or the M.2 drive. And now I can unplug my SD card from here. It's quite easily accessible. Uh, and then switch it off the Pi wait for this light to go out and switch on again. I've got a little white light that comes on here for disk access, which is quite nice. And let's install Open Media Vault from the GitHub. Oh, it doesn't let me do it. 
with a desktop environment. Interesting. Right, so I can change that in Raspberry config. Um, yeah, I wonder if that will let me do it. We'll give it a try. Console. So we'll do the auto login one. And reboot. Okay, so let's see if this works. So we still have the command there from the GitHub. That's annoying. So I just found this as a way of getting rid of the desktop environment. So I'm going to give it a try. You never know. Okay, I'm going to reboot and then try and install it again. Okay, fingers crossed. So let's try and install it again. Yeah, it does look like that's worked. Okay, it's all finished, uh, and I can see from when it's rebooted, the IP address is shown here, 192.168.1.62. So what I'm going to do is shut this down, sudo shutdown dash h. Now, I guess this works the same uh, as it does with normal Linux. Yeah, and I'm going to unplug this and just plug it in by my tally. Uh, so I can use a different Pi here. So let's plug it in so we've just got power to it. And let's boot up a different Pi 4 to be able to try and run it. So now if we open a browser and type in 192.168.1.62. Now the default is admin and open media vault. I've already changed mine to a different password which is what they recommend. And here's the admin dashboard, which gives you loads of control over things like your storage and your services. So you can see uh, this shows up as my whole disk, but not the partition. Uh, but if I go into file systems, I've mounted the ext4 partition and uh, you can see it's showing up as online. And shared folders, I've shared, uh, well I've been messing around with it. I think the storage one is the one I managed to, yeah, this one is shared uh, and enabled. So basically, if I go into the file system on this Pi and go to Go and Network, I used to only have my WD NAS drive, but now I've got these two partitions. This is actually the 16 gig partition on the Pi, uh, but this is the SMB share, and this is shared across my network. So if I double click, uh, I managed to copy this MP3 file over from a USB stick onto the M.2 SSD drive. And I can also access this on my M1 Mac. So if I go into files and storage, you can see the MP3 file is there. And if I press space, it will start to play. And so that's playing from the NAS drive behind. And if I want to use my Apple TV, I've got an app on here, File Explorer. And if I go back just to show you that it shows up as Raspberry Pi 2 and storage. And you can see the same MP3 file on that. Let's just turn it up a bit. I've got it going through my home pods. Okay, so thanks to 52Pi for sending me this NAS drive. I'm really impressed with that. I'm going to play around with Open Media Vault a lot more, but I'm really pleased that I've managed to get it all running from the M.2 drive. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.